One of the most disturbing elements of the Prohibition War is how it's made police the enemy of otherwise law-abiding cannabis consumers. Fortunately, one group of police officers knows the futility of Prohibition and reaches out to educate the community and current law enforcement. Today, the Russ Belleville Show visits with another speaker from Law Enforcement Against Prohibition with one clear message, cops say legalized drugs. Welcome back, everyone. Half past, and we're joined on telephone by Patrick Heinz from Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Patrick, how are you doing today? I'm well, thanks. Uh, thank you for being on our show again. We've spoken a couple of times, and it's always good to have you on. And very uh, good timing to have you on today, because yesterday I went over a piece written by Radley Balco on the Washington Post called The Inhumanity of American Prisons, and it pointed out these terrible, terrible uh crimes that have been committed, in my opinion, uh, against people who have been imprisoned, often, often mentally ill people who are locked in solitary and denied water and, and uh, you know, boiled, thrown into scalding hot showers. I mean, it's just some awful stuff. And I just wanted to ask about your experience in working in, in the prison system and having to deal with mentally ill illmates and uh, inmates and and how things may have changed since then or gotten worse well from my personal frame of reference uh first of all it should be pointed out that there's basically three types of prisons uh there's uh, county jails and county jails are where people are sent when they have a sentence that's uh three years or less state prison is where they're sent if they get a sentence that's greater than three years and then there's federal crimes, and people are sent to uh, federal prisons. Now, from my own personal experience in corrections, uh, I worked in Hamden County, and we have one of the larger uh, county jails in Massachusetts. But I was also fortunate that uh, <clears throat> Hamden County was the first uh, county jail in America to have a sheriff with a human service degree. Uh, and he's been in, he's going to retire now, but he was our sheriff for 40 years and he had a master's degree in social work. So the, the wonderful thing about that was when he first took office 40 years ago and here in Hamden County, his, his insight was that everyone in his prison, uh, in very short order was going to return to the community and once again be his neighbor. And so his insight was that, uh, it is in my personal best interest and every and my neighbor's uh, uh, best interest if uh, these inmates whose care and custody uh, I have been uh, given responsibility for return to the community in better shape uh, than when they entered my correctional facility. So he started some very uh, uh, progressive and integrative uh, uh, and groundbreaking uh, treatment. Uh, protocols for county jail and it was uh, he referred to it as uh, answering the bell everybody in his uh, correction facility had to answer the bell and uh, if you wanted to earn privileges uh, then you had to participate so you, uh, <clears throat> everybody has to start working on their GED if they don't have a high school education uh, and, they, and all these other uh, programs uh, uh, substance abuse treatment classes and so forth uh, and so it was just a wonderful, uh, progressive, humane uh, facility to work in. And uh, as a result, uh, the Hamlin County Sheriff's Department has the lowest recidivism rate of any county jail in the country. Uh, it was the first uh, jail that started the electronic monitoring, uh, uh, community correction facilities, and so forth, and, and uh recognized the necessity for transitional services. You know, you don't just boot them out the door and say, don't do it again, we'll see you later. You, people need to prepare to transition, have resources to transition, and then transition uh, so that they can be successful. But as far as the problem about the mentally ill in prisons, it is a horrible, horrific problem. Uh, and, you know, years ago in Massachusetts when they uh, 
uh, closed all the state hospitals, uh, or mental institutions, um, people uh, would talk about it and say, well, the people have been deinstitutionalized, when in reality, all they had been was trans-institutionalized, and they went from the state hospitals to the prisons. Uh, so probably a full 30% of the prison population, this is just off the top of my head, uh, um, uh, has uh, mental health issues. So in the facility I worked in, the, the, there was a, a, a very detailed and elaborate intake process for processing uh, new inmates. And a big part of that was uh, the intake and assessment evaluated mental health issues, history, and need. And we had, uh, you know, uh, uh, advanced degree personnel, mental health personnel on the staff. We had a, a very well-supported and staffed uh, human service department within the corrections facility that would assess people and uh, stabilize them. And uh, so because first what we did was uh, recognize mental illness in an inmate, uh, then we could uh, stabilize them, and if, uh, you know, uh, medications were necessary, uh, start those protocols and so forth, and then we could uh, uh, go from there. Hmm. Unfortunately, most correction facilities don't do that. Uh, you have, you know, all this inane talk about getting tough on crime, you know, and zero tolerance and uh, three strikes and you're out and lock them up and throw away the key. And, you know, all this get tough on crime rhetoric is really about uh, over uh, stuffing our prisons and getting tough on uh, uh, budgets. It's getting tough on education. It's getting tough on infrastructure. It's getting tough on uh, all the other community resources that require funding because we're spending it all by, uh, with mass incarcerations. And the fact that America uh, is the number one uh, incarcerator of its citizens on the planet. One out of every four people on the planet is in, that's incarcerated is in an American jail which is horrifying. That's, in, in fact, the, the data point that uh, got my attention from LEAP and caused me to get involved with the organization. I just could not believe that in the land of the free that we're 5% of the world's population and we house 25% uh, of the world's incarcerated population. I said, something has to be wrong with that. I mean, uh, you know, Western European industrial nations incarcerate their citizens at a rate approximately of 150 citizens per 100,000. In America, I believe, uh, not, if it's not exactly, it's very close to uh, not 150 per 100,000, but 1,009 per 100,000. So it's like, are we four times worse than the rest of the uh, Western industrialized world, or is there something wrong with our system? Mm. So when you start overcrowding like that, uh, care and custody becomes more and more difficult. The staffing ratios from when I first got into corrections to when I left it <clears throat> were, uh, they just kept getting worse and worse and worse, where you might have a one CO to 35 inmates, and I have uh, one CO to 105 inmates. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes he has a partner in uh, these modular jails. And, you know, then when you, you have the older jails, you're just warehousing people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they call it corrections, and it is corrections if people are provided treatment. But if people aren't uh, provided access to treatment, it's just warehousing. Right. And, of course, people don't come out of a situation like that better than when they went in. And, and again, we're so, speaking with... I don't know if that answers uh, your question, but... Uh, uh, no, it's, I, it's very, very good information. We're speaking with Patrick Hines, who's a retired mental health and corrections officer in Massachusetts. And uh, I, I also want to look at the other side of it, you know, not the prisoners, but the, the officers. Uh, part of Radley Balco's report talked about uh, a prison in Pennsylvania where guards were staging 
combat and competitions between mentally ill Ill inmates and calling it the, quote, retard Olympics, end quote. Sounds like there needs to be some training on the guard side as well on how to properly deal with these uh, inmates, especially with with solitary confinement being handed out fairly liberally for even the most minor offenses. Can you can you speak to that? Well, uh, you know, that was another thing. Of course, from my frame of reference, I think I, again, feel very fortunate that I landed in the Hamden uh, County uh, House of Correction mm -hmm. uh, because our sheriff uh, uh, spent a lot of time uh, communicating to his staff that uh, we're not guards, uh, we're highly trained corrections professionals. And, uh, you know, there was a, you know, a, you had to go through a six week, uh, training academy, uh, before you got, uh, on the job. And then you had two weeks after the academy where you, uh, uh, were just, you weren't really on shift, but you were a shift so they could see how it was done and so forth. He also insisted that all of the staff, except clerical, which was all the human service workers and all the uh, uh, food service workers and all the uh, uh, corrections officers, uh, all attended and successfully graduated from the academy. And what that did, uh, his uh, thought on that was that that would form a bond between uh, the uh, correction staff and the treatment staff. And so you wouldn't have this schism where uh, the COs are saying, well, you know, we got to keep these people under control. And now that, and then these uh, treatment people are telling them they're all, oh, poor baby, uh, you know, uh, uh, the world's mean to you and so forth. Uh, so the treatment staff and the correction staff were all on the same page. And it's about, uh, uh, as the sheriff said, it said, it's not our job as corrections personnel to punish this population. The judge and the courts punished them when they took away their freedom. So they've already been punished, and now they've been passed over into our care and custody, and our job is care and custody, mm. and uh, to provide, uh, you know, a service to our community, which is to hopefully uh, provide them with uh, structure and supervision, 